Hi, I'm Brian Dean from Amulet Studios. This video is a behind the scenes look at how I made this Screaming Head cinematic. This cinematic is part of a series where I'll be creating various scenes and exploring various pipeline techniques. The focus here is not on creating absolute perfection, but on testing and building a set of reliable production tools for creating content with the Unreal Engine. If you want to see the finished cinematic, the link is in the description below, as well as a link to part one, where I talked about the different AI tools I used to aid in the creation process. In the last video, I explained how I used Midjourney to create the concept images for this cinematic series. Now, let's get into how I actually created the scene in Unreal. With the concept image in hand, I began by analyzing its components and made a checklist of all the elements I would need. The environment appeared to be a large arched hallway with pillars. I have lots of architectural elements in my asset library and a quick search yielded this model, which I purchased long ago from the Daz 3D Marketplace. I thought it would work perfectly as a starting point with the central structure serving nicely as the hallway interior. For added detail, I grabbed a few models from the Megascans library, like these pillars and this brick trim model. I also grabbed some textures from the Megascans library to apply to the hallway model to make it all integrate a little bit better. For the walls up and around the ceiling, I created a kind of exposed brick look by painting stones onto the surface of the model. I also used the same technique with the foliage brush to add some rubble to the ground plane. Now the interior was going to be dimly lit with lots of atmospheric fog and there was going to be tentacles covering lots of it, so I didn't really need to go too crazy with the architecture since we probably weren't going to see much of it. So with that in place, next was the woman in the foreground. For her, I decided I would just use a metahuman. Metahumans made with the Metahuman Online Creator can sometimes feel a bit recognizable, but the Mesh to Metahuman tool allows you to create base meshes outside of Unreal and convert those into Metahuman rigs. This can help give your Metahuman a fresh look. There are plenty of options for doing this, including sculpting your own or using third-party options like Realusion's Character Creator, or Daz 3D, which I used for this character. Inside Daz Studio, I blended various different character presets and then played with some of the morph sliders until I was happy with the result. Then I imported this model into Unreal and converted it to a metahuman with the mesh to metahuman tool. Now, if you've used metahumans, you know they have a very limited selection of clothing and the typical metahuman clothing options weren't going to work here, so this character would need something custom. For the garment creation, I opted to use Marvelous Designer. Now I'll go into my garment workflow as well as different motion capture tools I used in more detail in future videos. Now let's get to the main focus of this shot, which is the big demonic head in all the tentacles. Now this would have to be custom made and that would require some sculpting. And I am by no means a sculptor. Now this series was intended to serve as a learning process where I explore all aspects of production. So I figured this would be a good chance for me to leave my comfort zone and test my sculpting abilities or lack thereof. I'd be using ZBrush for the sculpt. Now, I've owned ZBrush for years, but I rarely use it. So before jumping in, I decided to watch some tutorials to get up to speed with the software. I also spent a lot of time initially at the beginning watching some time-lapse sculpting videos and tutorials to see what brushes artists were using, when and how they were using them, and just tried to pick up any tips and tricks. I also went to ArtStation and picked up an asset pack of teeth and gums, which saved me a lot of time from having to model the mouth interior. Now, I knew I wasn't going to be able to make anything good on the first attempt, so I decided I would spend a few days sculpting, and each day I would start over again from scratch. Each day I'd take the things I learned from the day before, using the techniques that worked, and staying away from the things that didn't. I think it was around day four I decided to finally commit to a finished version, and with some brushes that I purchased from ArtStation, I was able to quickly add some really nice surface detail in the final stages of the sculpt, and ultimately I produced a sculpt that I thought was okay. Looking back, there are things I definitely would need to work on more, and those are things that a noob would typically struggle with, which is maintaining shape and volume so that things don't feel too blobby, having a better understanding of the facial anatomy and structures, and also not jumping into a high level of subdivisions too early. But it was a lot of fun, and I could have spent weeks on this, but there was still more to be done. 
Now for all the tentacles that are in the scene, placing them all by hand really wasn't gonna be an option. I was really looking for something that was gonna be more procedural in nature. Now, thinking about these tentacles a little differently, you could almost think of them as really thick vines or roots growing along the surface of the walls. And then I started to think, well, I do have speed tree and speed tree is procedural and maybe I could use that to make the tentacles. Speedtree is specialized 3D modeling software designed to create realistic foliage and vegetation. It is widely used in the game and film industry to create trees, plants, and other forms of vegetation. But would it work for tentacles? There's only one way to find out. So I jumped into Speedtree and began doing some experimenting. And actually, it worked out really well. I was able to quickly generate large masses of tentacles, which I could quickly fill the set with. And because it's procedural, I could then easily create multiple variations and adjust the overall look with just a few clicks. Now to create these elements, I first created a tree trunk, which I would then hide. This was only needed to spawn the branches, which would serve as the tentacles. I then added some noise to the shapes. I added a few gnarl and twist forces. Now, the only problem is that there's no collision for the branch meshes. And that means as the mesh of tentacles increased and became more dense, the likelihood that they'd intersect each other increased. Luckily, Speed Tree has a freehand mode. So after the procedural generation, it allows you to go in and individually move and place separate branches, or in this case, tentacles. So I was able to go through and fix any of the really obvious interpenetrations. Now this was a little bit tedious, but it really wasn't too bad. And I really only had to do this for just the body section and just a couple of the hero tentacle elements that would be close to camera. For the body mass, I created a trunk, this time keeping it visible. It served as the main core of the body. I then added some tentacle limbs growing off one side, increasing the weld values to blend it into the body core. Then I created a smaller secondary set of limbs. I took these nodes, duplicated them, and adjusted the sweep to bring them to the other side. Then I reversed the values on the noise and curl settings to orient them in the proper direction, and then varied up some of the settings to create some asymmetry. Now, because this was going to be a nanite mesh, I was able to really crank up the subdivision level and then add some nice displacement for some nice detail. Then I brought all the pieces into Unreal and finished constructing the set. As a little finishing detail, I added a super simple Niagara particle effect for the eyes. I also added some really simple Niagara particle systems to add a bit of localized smoke, and that would basically do it. Overall, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. There's definitely lots of room for improvement and definitely things I would have liked to have spent more time on polishing up, but it was time to call this one done and start working on the next scene. So there you go. I hope you found this little insight into how I put this together useful. And if so, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos.